So when I'm trying to play this stuff back, it's not doing very well at all. So I really need to render this clip here to see it back properly. How do you do that inside of Resolve? Well, what you do is you actually add it to a cache. So if you come up to the playback heading, you can see here some headings that say render cache. Obviously some for turning it on and off and some for deleting stuff. If I go to render cache and I've got the option of smart or user. Now, if you choose smart, what it does is it looks at stuff that needs to be done and then it automatically renders it in the background whilst you work. If you put it on user, then you have to tell it which bits to render. The, the user thing, though, only seems to work when you're on the color page. Yeah, if I was to choose user and then mark out an area here with an in point and an out point, there isn't an easy way to actually get it to start rendering. Now, what I tend to do is just put it onto smart and let it render stuff for me. But before I do, I'm going to have to tell it what format it's going to render it into. So to do that, you've got to come to the settings. So let's click on the cog again and bring up the settings and go to the general options. And you can see here you've got cache frames in and a particular format, which is set to uncompressed 10 bit. So basically, if I told it to render right now, it's going to make up uncompressed 10 bit high definition, which there's no chance that my computer is going to be able to play back off a regular drive. It's also going to take up lots of space. I don't really need to do that. I'm going to render it in a much lower version. And then when it comes to make it at the end, it'll remake it in a decent version. So what I'm going to do is just come to this thing and click on it and choose a different codec. And as you can see, you've only got a couple of compressed versions and then various versions of DNxHR, which is an Avid codec. And I choose one of the two ones at the bottom. These go in order of quality. So LB or low bit rates, the slowest quality. You've got standard quality, high quality, high quality 10 bit and 444, which is basically uncompressed. I tend to go for one of those two just so I can render something to see what it looks like, but not take up too much space. And I'm going to leave it on low bit rate. When I make the thing at the end, it should remake it and ignore the render files. So that shouldn't be a problem. Now you'll notice you've got a tick box there that says enable background caching after five seconds. So as long as that's ticked, what it's going to do is look at bits of the timeline that need rendering and render it. So looking at this bit of the timeline here, okay, nothing's happening yet. I've got to come to playback, render cache, and then smart. And now you notice it's suddenly flagging up areas of the timeline that need work. So red are bits of the timeline that it struggles to play back. And you can see this bit here at the front, it went from being red into being blue. So it's rendered that cross dissolve at the start. I can play it back and it works. These bits in the middle, while I've been talking, they've gone from blue into red. And again, I can play those back. Just give it a bit more run up. And you notice that plays back normally. If I was to change it, then you'll notice it needs to be re-rendered again, but it'll do it in the background for me. So I can come back to it in a second and that stuff will have been done. As I say, in the settings, there was this option to render it after five seconds. So it just kicks in after five seconds and renders it. And then I can play it back. So if I turn off the enable background caching and let's change something again, now it's not going to start rendering. And obviously you've got the options up here under playback to delete the render cache. So it deletes either all of it or the unused bits or certain bits that you've selected. Where is it going? Well, again, go back to settings and inside of here, you can see you've got cache clip there, the cache files location, and that is going to a folder called cache clip, which is on the top drive in this media storage thing. So if I go and have a look at that, Let's go to the E drive, cache clip, and now you can see I've got a whole bunch of stuff in here with lots of different files inside them. Can't do anything with them there. They're all files which are made by Resolve, but that's all my rendered stuff. It's going basically at the moment to the top drive in the list. But there we are, that's the way of rendering things so you can see it properly. Now, when you come onto the color page, you can actually choose specific clips to render, but we'll talk about that in a second. Other things I'd like to look at. I said there's a whole bunch of different effects inside of here, turn off the media pool. But there's a very interesting one, which is called smooth cut. What's that all about? Well, I'm going to take this clip of me and just make it a bit longer. So activate ripple editing, grab hold of the edge and drag it and make it bigger. And in this particular clip, I talk a lot and I don't really want that middle sentence there. That whole sentence there is just a bit too much. So I'm going to cut it out. So I'm just going to mark an in point with I and out point with an O. 
If it's all selected like that between the in and the out point, I press delete and it gets rid of it. So that's just ripple delete between your in and out point. Now you play it, and I've managed to cut out that middle sentence, but of course I end up with a jump cut. Well, the smooth cut is a kind of morph cut between the two. So Premiere added an effect called a morph cut recently. This is basically the same thing. So what I'm going to do is shove it onto the timeline. You could drag through it and have a, a look at what it's going to look like, or you could just wait for it to render, which you'll finish doing in a second. There we are. And press the play button. You just put it in. Now in this case it's doing something really peculiar down there because what this is doing is trying to do a morph between the two clips. Uh, it was okay on the face but it wasn't too okay on the edges. I could try making it smaller, wait for it to render and see what that does. But you might still get some peculiarities like that. That smooth cut thing is exactly the same thing as the morph cut in Premiere. Sometimes in Premiere the morph cut works, sometimes it doesn't and it does silly things like this one does. Personally, when I have this kind of problem, I still go for doing a cutaway instead. Another nice thing inside of Resolve is slow motion. So what I'm going to do is open up the media pool and make me a new timeline. So I'm going to right click in a blank area, timelines, new timeline, call it something. And I'm just going to grab hold of this clip of somebody surfing. Oh, they were surfing on a river. It's a 4K clip, so it's actually 25 frames a second. It's on a 50 frames a second timeline. You notice when I put it in the player, it's playing back at 50 frames a second. I want to slow that down, so how do I do it? Actually, very simple. Right click and then say change clip speed and then type something in. And you've got all the usual stuff you'd have in an editing program, so there's the speed it's going at. Things like ripple sequence. Ripple sequence basically means you change the speed, it gets longer, move things out of the way. If the clip gets shorter, move the clips to fill up the gap. So pretty much straightforward stuff. Things like freeze framing, reverse speed, they're all straightforward. I'll just click on that. And because I didn't have rippling set, the clip didn't get any longer. I'm just playing less of it. And there you can see I've now got my clip playing in slow motion, which is just repeating frames. But if I open up the inspector, and go to the bottom, you have this stuff, retiming. So if I go to the retime process, you can see I've got nearest, which is repeating frames. I've got frame blending, so let's just select that. Now it's not playing it back so well, so it could probably do with a bit of rendering, but that's frame blending, which is you know, just like you would have in, in Edius or Premiere. I'm gonna also take this clip and make a copy of it by grabbing it, holding down an alt, dragging it, and letting go, which is a way of making a copy of a clip simply. Works exactly the same in Premiere. And on my second clip here, I'm gonna go back to the retiming process and choose Optical Flow. Now, Optical Flow is a way of doing slow motion where it invents frames. And it requires quite a lot of processing power. And bear in mind, this is a 4K clip which is being scaled down to HD on a 50p timeline. So obviously there's some work going on there and it's not quite managing it. I do know on my desktop system, where I've got a nice fancy 1070 graphics card, I can actually do this whole thing back at 25 frames in 4K in real time without any rendering. But optical flow is a nice way of doing slow motion because what it does is it makes stuff up. So it looks at the frames, looks at how things are moving and then tries to fill in the empty spaces. Frame blending, which is what this first one does, is just sort of cross-fading between some frames. So it's not quite as smooth, whereas optical flow can get you smoother slow motion. Now let's have a look at both of those, and then you can see roughly what the optical flow does. Now optical flow isn't perfect, sometimes it makes up the wrong stuff. But let's just try both of those. Now to see it really well, I'm going to play it full screen. I said you couldn't play stuff back full screen inside Resolve, but you can just not in the way that some people would like it to. The way to do it is you go up to the workspace heading and then a viewer mode and choose cinema viewer. And then the playback window takes over the whole screen. So let's just put it back to the start, press the play button. And you can see that's the frame blended slow motion. And this is the optical flow slow motion. And you can see the optical flow is nicer there's bits where his arms are moving around there where it's not perfect, but it is definitely nicer. 
And you might say to yourself, you know, I've seen better slow motion than that on footage that I've got. Your footage is probably interlaced footage, so it's 50i footage where you have 50 pictures a second. My footage is 25 frames a second. And I found that with 25 frames a second footage, it's harder to get decent slow motion out of it. This is what it looks like inside of Resolve. Let me do the same thing inside of Edius. No, Edius doesn't do op optical flow. It just does this frame blending stuff. And as you can see, I don't think that's quite as good as the optical flow that's coming out of Resolve. If I do the same thing in Premiere, you know, this is the frame blended version in Premiere. And this is the optical flow version. Now, I think Premiere is doing a better optical flow than Resolve, but of course I've had to pay for it. It's nice that it's got optical flow because I can get something out of it, which looks fairly decent. This is one of those things where if your graphics card isn't up to it, your whole Resolve will either grind to a halt or possibly crash. I've definitely found if I've tried this on a graphics card that maybe only has only one or two gigs of memory and I've used a 4K clip, I've definitely had Resolve crash. So it's one of those things that says, yes, you really need a better graphics card to be able to use this properly. That's why we say you need a pretty good system to run Resolve. But if you've got that, it does a lot of nice stuff. So in a nice new fancy 1070 graphics card with 8 gig of RAM, I can do this clip in 4K in real time. No rendering at all using optical flow. So with the slow motion, there is a setting there. You can set per clip or you can just choose project settings. And if you remember earlier on, there was a setting inside of the project under editing here where you can say set a particular retiming mode for everything. So for example, you could edit with nearest set, but when it comes to rendering, you could pop it into optical flow and then everything will get rendered with optical flow. But whilst you've been editing, you've been getting faster feedback because it's all been on nearest, which is nice. There is also an option inside of Edius to keyframe the slow motion. So if I right click on it again and go to retime controls, you actually get some controls up here where you can get it speed up and slow down. So very quickly trying to explain this, and it's never easy to try and explain these things quickly. The first thing I would do is to add some points in. So click on this little black gizmo down here and you get the option to add a point in where your cursor is. Move along a bit, say, click on that little black triangle and add another speed point. And then in the middle, I change the speed to something else, like 10%. Now I've put those points in, if I play it, see it's gone between two different speeds if I then want to put a ramp between these two different sets of frames what I'd have to do is open up the retime curve controls and adjust those I won't go through that right now like I said it could get quite complicated but it has got fancy slow motion it's got key frameable slow motion and it's got optical flow again these are all things which are in the free version now they're obviously in the paid version as well but they are in the free version Another thing worth mentioning about Resolve is where the projects go. Because this is another thing which messed me up a little bit when I first started using it. And it's just different to everything else. So I'm going to click on the little house button there, which takes me back to the project manager. This is how you can come out of this project and go into another project. Where are these things? I actually came in here, clicked make new project. You don't actually know where they are. Well, the way Resolve works is the projects all go on the C drive and under the program data folder, which is normally a hidden folder, so you might not even be able to see it on your computer. If I go into there, I go to the Blackmagic folder, resolve, support, database, projects, users, guest, projects, and there it is. There are my actual projects. So really, really quite well hidden. And you can see I've got that is the training project folder. So you might think, well, if I need to save the project, I've got to drill down there, copy that and move it somewhere else. Yeah, don't do that. That's where they are, but that's not how I move projects around between computers. There's a much easier way of doing it. But if you ever want to know it, that's where it's actually gone. A much easier way of sorting that out. If I want to move a project from this computer to another computer, I'll click on the house. I'll get back to the project manager, go to the project, right click and say export. Obviously, it says I just need to save the project. Yeah, OK. You choose where it's going to go. 
can give it a name or we can just leave it as it is or give it a name and click on save and now that's exported the project then i can go into another computer and again bring up the project manager right click and say import choose the project which by this time i would have copied to the other computer find that file the drp file and then say open now in my case i've already got a training project in here so it's prompting me for another name but that brings in that project and i can now go into it yeah, imagine this with two different computers that will have got the project from one computer to another computer it doesn't take the clips it's just the project just like it would be in edius or premiere but that is how I would move projects around between computers. In fact, when I'm editing in Resolve, I've got into the habit at the end of every day, I will just come in here and I'll export a project and put it somewhere. So I've got a copy of a project somewhere which isn't where it started off as a backup. As long as I remember to come into the little clog and turn on the autosave, I've actually got backups happening all the time. They're happening in every 10 minutes. As long as I've done that, it is autosaving, but I like to do the export as well every day just to keep me another copy of the project somewhere else. By the way, if it does go horribly wrong and crash, which has only happened to me once, but if it does go horribly wrong and crash and trash the project, the way you get to your backups is you come into Resolve in any old project, and then you go to List Backups, and here you can see all of the backups for the various projects that I've done, and you choose one of the backups and you say Load It, and then it copies back into that project manager. Other thing I'll quickly mention is relinking clips. I am going to very simply rename the folder where all my clips are, which it won't let me do when Resolve is open. So let's come out of Resolve and then rename it. Now my clips are no longer where it thinks they were. So let's go back into Resolve and fix it. Because again, I have this a lot with other programs, it's fixable in Resolve just like everything else, and it's quite simple. Let's load up the training project, go to the edit, and OK, I'm missing stuff. OK, some of it's there, but that's the bits that have been rendered is there. You might notice the clips actually say offline, but the rendered versions are still there. If I went up to the cache and say delete all the rendered cached files, you notice I've now got big holes everywhere. Now, how do I fix it? easiest way to do it is go to the media tab go to the clips put that in icon mode you can see all the ones that are missing the only one that's still alive is the fusion clip and i'm going to select all of those right click and say relink selected clips go to wherever they are which in my case is in a folder called resolve and into mov xxx bong all relinked come back to the edit tab all working again and that's how you relink clips. In earlier versions, you had to do other things. There was this change source folder that you had to use and stuff like that. But now in this version, very easy. You select the clips that are missing and you just point them to the right place and it relinks them. Pretty similar to what you would do in Edius. Premiere's relinking is probably one of my favorites in any editing program because it does a lot of things automatically and it can find clips for you. This doesn't find clips. You basically have to select them and then tell them where they've gone. But actually, I have moved projects a lot between work and home and relink them, and I've not had an issue. So pretty nice, pretty simple to relink stuff. Uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of things I could tell you about the editing, but what I now want to do is to get on to the color page.